Overcomers Unanimous, Power Line number 14. Unhealthy boundaries lead to rigid rules. Boundaries are important. Without boundaries, structure, or rules, a person falls into chaos or confusion. But what are boundaries? Boundaries define limits. A boundary is an emotional or physical space between you and another person. The demarcation of where you end and another begins and where you begin and another ends. Uh, some research says that we are comfortable with 18 inches physically, but emotionally it's different, much more difficult to deal with. The purpose of having boundaries is for protection and security. We need to be able to tell other people when they are acting in ways that are not acceptable to us. Some boundaries are rigid and need to be. Boundaries such as, it's not okay to hit me ever. It is not acceptable to call me certain names. It's not acceptable to cheat on me. It's not okay to take advantage of me. These are healthy boundaries. When people set and, def and defend healthy boundaries, they are not nearly as angry or as angry as often as those who don't. People who know and set their limits do not get as angry because they know just how far to go and the people around them know how far they will or will not go. We all need healthy boundaries. Our boundary defines who we are and determines how we are able to interact and relate to the world physically, emotionally, spiritually. My boundary lets me know where I end and you begin. My boundary allows me to express who I am and allows you to do the same. If we grew up in a dysfunctional family situation, inconsistent and various forms of abuse influence our ability to form and maintain appropriate healthy boundaries. We may also have difficulty identifying the boundaries of others. When others violate our personal boundaries, we can be hurt physically, emotionally, spiritually, and turn those boundaries into rigid walls. People whose boundaries are weak also tend to violate the boundaries of others. If you don't know that you have boundaries that must be respected, then you also know other people have boundaries you must respect. A primary cause of conflict and difficulties in relationship lies in unhealthy boundaries. My boundary is my container. When I'm too contained or not contained enough, then problems and relationships result. Healing and restoring our boundary is part of the change process or recovery process. If I develop an overly protective boundary, my ability to be in healthy relationships with others is compromised. It's like being in a shell, like a turtle. No one can get in and I can't get out. The give and take, the back and forth flow in a relationship is hampered. One of the effects of a lack of boundaries is the impaired ability to discern the difference in identity between yourself and another. This may be expressed as enmeshment, intertwined with another, where you may adopt thoughts and feelings of another person and a semblance of boundaries is blurred, if not altogether lost. For example, codependent people, perhaps in the roles of a caretaker, a fixer, or a people pleaser, may appear to be highly focused uh, on another person and very sensitive to that person's needs, yet they are in many ways unaware of the other person's truer needs or boundaries. This is because codependents are involved in projecting their imagined beliefs about the person onto them, based upon their own unresolved fear or past experience. This is usually a fear of non-acceptance or rejection or abandonment. So building walls versus creating healthy boundaries. When we can't or won't or don't set boundaries, we still feel we have to do something. So very often we rage, act out on our anger. Most alcoholics or addicts and the people who love them have been invaded, have listened to jokes they didn't want to, have been engulfed, uh, dishonored, defiled, molested, beaten, or abused so many times that in order to survive, to survive, they erect huge, thick, solid walls and dug moats around those walls 
and the moats are filled with crocodiles. These walls and crocodiles become resentments, bitterness, alcoholics and addicts and many others cannot afford to have. We learn to hide our emotions, feelings, talents, needs, desires behind the bricks and mortar of that wall and then wonder why we don't have more intimacy or love or communication or connections in our lives. A clean, healthy boundary is a way to inform others as to how you wish to be treated, respected, or loved. The rigid boundary is like an impenetrable wall. Nothing can go in or come out. No boundary, uh, the person is totally unprotected. Everything can flood in and flood out with no boundary. Partial boundaries work sometimes but are not reliable. Healthy boundaries protect the individual and the person can choose what comes in and what comes out. Proverbs 25, 28 says, He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down without any walls. Boundaries are lines that you draw in the sand, on the carpet, in the air, of your soul, in your body, in life, just in general. Others can't cross these lines without consequences or repercussions. A boundary is not imaginary, though you don't see it. Boundary says, this is how close you can come to me physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially, sexually, or verbally. Boundaries, if created and defended appropriately, will prevent you from getting angry as often because you will feel less violated, less offended, or abused, or exhausted. Unhealthy boundaries where we collude with our partner in believing the myths that everything is fine, make it difficult to come to terms with the true troubles of a relationship. Healthy boundaries allow us to test reality rather than rely on fantasy. When problems are present, good boundaries allow us to define the problem and to communicate with our partner in finding a solution. They encourage healthy self-image, healthy trust, consistency, stability, and productive communication. Galatians 5.1 says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Rules, like boundaries, are important. We need to know structure and limits. Rules without a relationship with God are just rules. They lose their effectiveness and can lead to confusion. A relationship without God, though, is still a relationship. If the relationship with God is cultivated and nurtured, His rules become second nature because they no longer seem like rules or restrictions, but freedom, an outgrowth of love and not a mandate of performance. Just as boundaries are not bondage, but rather freedom, so rules that come from a relationship with the Lord is freedom and not bondage or confusion. Remember this acronym, rules. R, rules or boundaries unrelated to a loving relationship eliminate safety and security. Rules. Rules or boundaries unrelated to a Loving relationship eliminates safety and security. Overcomers Unanimous, power line number 14. Unhealthy boundaries lead to rigid rules.